<laughs> Nick. All right. What's your topic? Let's shake off the rust. That was an intense topic. This one. It wasn't be. meant to be. I didn't think you. I thought you guys were gonna make fun of it a little bit more. <clears throat> we went down that rabbit hole hard. Uh, this comes from our good friend Tack Track. Oh, where? where? Over off Patreon. dot com forward slash kind of funny. You can you go too. there and sponsor a topic. Yeah, you can. If you say forward slash one more time, <laughs> I say it now. I'm w, not, now w, I'm never w, gonna w, say w? It. H T T P maybe S H H H T T P S. This is a long one. I'll prayer for it. Now nah, I'll read the whole thing. The entire plot was in the trailer. I get irritated, upset, and let down when a film comes out, and the pertinent plot points are beat bopping and scatting all over the place. <laughs> the most recent case I could think of was Jurassic World. They kept releasing long trailers full of giveaways. Does this bother you? Does this bother you guys when you watch a trailer? Yes. And the entire fucking movie is in the trailer. It's the worst, and it's so prevalent these days. Old the the older trailers didn't do this. When when did that change? <sighs> ought ought. I mean, yeah, it must have been. It's got to be mid nineties to the to the to early two thousands. I really feel like that's when they switched this. They flipped the script on it, and all of a sudden you couldn't. You felt like you see everything. Well, I think I think it was also during the the transition from. Um, Having trailers that had heavy voiceover, two mm-hmm. trailers that like when when that style of trailer went out, you could no longer like have catchy phrases that the guy could say, so you had to show more stuff. Yeah, and also I feel like, and and, and I could be wrong on this, but I feel like there's just more fucking trailers now. Like Jurassic World probably had four trailers and ten movie spots, and the mm-hmm. thing that happens at the Super Bowl and the thing that happens at the at Wimbledon or whatever the fuck I don't know. Um, well, well, I think it says the internet, right? Like before, trailers were just before movies, yeah. and then you did maybe a TV, TV spot. spot, yeah. But like now, it's the trailer. People don't think of trailers as before movies; they think of it as when's it drop online, mm-hmm. and that's why they are event things where there's multiple trailers for a movie. It was before it was standard to have, you know, the trailer and then like the launch trailer and then a TV spot, mm-hmm. usually three thirty second ones. Now it's like a fucking shit ton. Yeah, no, I think it bothers me too. I mean. I, I, with Jurassic Park, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but I'm pretty sure they show the the like the most important frame in that entire movie, where at the very very end, like third act climax, where you know she's got a flare, she's opening up a door, running she's away, running in high heels for some reason, running away from high heels. You know, no, uh, he's the di- the dinosaur isn't wearing high heels. Was the dinosaur wearing roller no. skates? <laughs> <laughs> that's how they that's how she was able to keep some speed that's fantastic. dinosaurs all over the place I was like okay, I'm, I'm getting the hang of this these are rail, these are rollerblades i mean the shit right now but old school roller skates are a little harder uh stop her on the front <laughs> <laughs> you just have to drag them remember that you couldn't stop you just kind of drag them a little bit yeah slow yourself roller down. skates are so stupid i think it's annoying but at the same time i also think just don't watch them like tim said they're all online at this point you're looking for the trailer like you if you go see a movie you might see the trailer for Jurassic World, what twice? If you only if you see, mm-hmm. you know, five movies over the span of like of a few months, you might see that trailer. Depending on how they serve the trailer, a couple times that's fine. So, you know, just uh, I think the, the the clear thing to do here, Tack Track, is just don't watch any TV, don't watch any movies. See, never that go is online. the downside, right? Is like, how do you avoid it? Like, you want to be interested yeah. in a movie, like I with Amazon now, right? Where I hop on and I want to watch a movie instantly or whatever. We're just, Christine, I'll go in there and we'll go through it, and there'll be like movies where it's like. Eh. This sounds all right. And then it's the question of like, well, do I roll the dice? Do I watch the trailer? Because if I watch the trailer, it's going to give it away right. plot point by plot point, And inevitably, the ending will be in there. They'll act like you don't know. But like, you know, you can piece it all together. Oh, God, yeah. You watch these fucking You're going to see like, that oh. last shot of like the robot escaping from yeah. the fucking prison. And you're like, well, there it is. There I mean, it the is. problem too, yeah, it's like when you're watching the what? the movie, then you start it's thinking generic. back like piece by piece. Yep. So you get to the point where you're like, all right, I well, I still haven't yet. seen this location yeah, so that exactly, means that's exactly, where we're exactly. going and that kind of sucks the last movie i saw that i hadn't seen any trailer for was gone girl and going into the movie without knowing anything about it i was like this is fucking great yeah, what a great movie but i can't imagine like, it's impossible to do that nowadays because not only do you have to dodge the trailers you need to dodge all the talk about it with twitter and with ign and with us and with all these things like there's no way that you don't know at least X amount of Star Wars just because people talking about it, you know, or like every headline or every mm-hmm. freaking thumbnail or screen cap or whatever of the trailers like that. That alone gives shit away. So it's like I I like to buy into the hype because once the movie's out, the movie's out. So it's like that is a, a finite experience. But the hype and you can put a, a level of like how good was it? But when it comes to the trailers and all the hype and stuff, that's just as fucking good as you want it to be. So I like to just fucking spoil the shit out of myself for most of the things just because it's impossible to do it how you used to do and not know anything. 
If that was an option, I'd probably go with that. But since it's not, I just fucking go full bore. <laughs> you just, go you, hard as you shit. can't beat him, you're going to join him? Yep. That's basically what you're saying? Mm-hmm. I guess I, I, for me, it depends on the movie, right? Like with Star Wars, I want I want all of that to be out there so that I can choose to indulge if I want. I can choose to watch all the trailers. Like there's a TV spot where someone uh, that, that I think was running last week where there was some other stuff that someone told me about. I was like, I don't want to watch that. I want to see that scene mm. in the movie mm. for the first time. Um and yeah, I feel like those trailers have done a good job of not like there's enough in there where I question. I'm like, oh, I went, maybe, is somebody coming in to save them now because they have their hands over their head? But it's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like there's so many trailers you watch that are just like, this is what it fucking is. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I feel like with Star Wars also like they don't have the burden of having to tell you what this brand new franchise is. Sure. You kind of get it. You know, it's Star Wars. They could have just showed Star Wars and then just the fucking just the Millennium Falcon just cruising. For like five seconds, and I'm like, I'm gonna wait in line. Having right. trouble starting it for a second, it's just like, kind of there. Eh, just dr- it's like eh, slowly falling, and then it just eh, goes eh, up and says Star Wars. It's like we're in. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would have been in, and that's true. But like you have a movie like Ant Man, where you're like, okay, well, they need to go the other way with it. They need to show so much of this because no one's gonna see a movie called Ant Man, and uh, it worked. People went and saw it. People liked it. It was good. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, like there was nothing in Ant Man that I watched that really wowed me because I had seen 90 percent of it in the trailers, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and even any of the like, like that one great shot where you know uh, uh, they're fighting miniature and like it's all this crazy explosions, and then it like stops for a second and it goes to, like yep, normal the person, train. and yeah, the train yeah. hits and yeah. falls down. Just in the movie, you're like, I'm waiting uh, for it, I'm waiting coming, for it, I'm waiting. Yeah. There it is. That's what and Avengers. That would have been, been an amazing moment in the film. Yeah, they, Avengers they had, they had is the one Marvel movie that didn't blow its load in the the trailers. I mean, it did in a lot of ways, but. There was like the, I think one of the best shots in the the whole movie of Avengers, which I don't want to spoil for people, but like they involve okay the Hulk to spoil Avengers, or they I involve right now. Um, Thor, just like all of or them Iron together Man, yeah. doing stuff, and it's like that stuff wasn't in the trailers. So it's like when I remember seeing them being like, "Oh fuck, that's cool," mm-hmm. but every other Marvel movie, it's like the trailers are as good. Dude, as no, it per- gets. a perfect example is Avengers: uh, Age of Ultron, right? They showed like the last scene where they're defending the. MacGuffin, I can't even remember. Oh, the thing in the you yeah. think yeah. in, like in the, the center, yeah, yeah. and all of them are like flying around it, and like you know Doing shit's shit. happening. You're like this. That's I bet that's a really cool moment mm-hmm. at the climax of this movie. The most important part emotionally for me as a viewer to not know what's going to happen, and now I know exactly what's going to happen. Mm. I think Thanks, it's one of the reasons Joss with the Whedon. Amazon thing, I'm taking more chances on movies I've never heard of. But I like I like, I know this actor and I know that mm-hmm. actress, and they're in this thing, and I've never seen this indie or whatever. And it's like okay. I feel Whatever. Like, I'm not going to watch the trailer because it's like that's the worst is watching the trailer right before you watch the movie. Oh, well, no, I'm not going to do this. It's going to fucking tell me everything. I yeah. feel like that's good, though. I mean, like you're we are at a weird place, I think, right now, especially uh, as as viewers of film where I think the line starting to blur between, you know, back in the day when you were a kid, you're like you knew what was a, like a triple A film with an A-list celebrity like director and stars and all that stuff. You just knew that. Right. That was a clearly defined line where it was out in the theaters. That means that's a movie that I should pay, be paying attention to. If it's straight to uh, DVD or, in our case, VHS, or in my case, Beta. Um, <laughs> if it's straight to that, you know it's a piece of shit, right? It's a B movie that didn't get funded and it has no one in it, right? But now it's like I'm seeing movies with like Bruce Willis that are just straight to Netflix. And I'm like, where did this come from? Yeah. And so as a as kind of an old school mu- uh, movie goer, like it's, bri- it's breaking my brain because I'm like, that's – a movie with Daniel Radcliffe. Like, that's Harry Potter. Like, he's a big star. I should know that he was in this movie, but I've never seen this movie, but it looks kind of cool. Talking about what if? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good movie. It was a good movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And again, it was on It was on HBO again the other day, and I was like, this fuck, it's a good movie, man. I just started watching it, and kind of, I watched like 30 minutes of it, and then my brother-in-law was in town. I was like, um, hey, Under Siege is on. We should watch that instead. So we watched the entirety of Under Siege. What was the one we were lo- watching last night? Where Steven Seagal is kicking ass in a beer. Uh, oh, beer God. In a what bar. is that one called? That's a weirder one. Um, it's the it one mean? where he he like that Indian guy gets picked on in the bar and he, and he fights like, he, some guy. Yeah, he has a like, slap the hands. Hand slap hands game with the guy in the bar. It Fuck, gets, which one was it? It gets a little murky after Under Siege because he did Hard to Kill, which was his breakout film. Then he did Under Siege. Then he did Marked for Death. This was from which like was 90, really weird. This was like 93, 94. Was it with the Rastafarian twins? Fuck. There was one that had the Rastafarian twins in it. I can't remember the name of it. I'm just the cook. It's not like hard to kill or something like that. Just it's a plain uh, old cook. Yeah, this is. <laughs> it's, I'm, I put Steven Seagal hand slap in the hand slap game on YouTube. Worst movie scenes of all time. <laughs> Episode one. <laughs> I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna guess that Steven Seagal has on deadly this. ground. On, on deadly, deadly ground, ground. That's what it is. Yeah, because uh, I remember like way later. at the end after he beats later. the shit out of that guy. 1994. Oh, yeah. I was right. After he beats the shit out of that guy. Um, 
he like teaches them a life lesson, which is pretty awesome, and then walks away. And Steven's like, uh, "What have you learned?" <laughs> but uh, I think uh, I do think that I don't watch a lot of movie trailers because I I just when I hear it's the same thing with games. Like when I hear about a game that I like or I'm interested in, I just ignore it until it's out. <laughs> so it's that way you just don't really know what's then, getting what you're getting involved in. Like I don't watch I watch almost no game trailers at all. Like at all, unless like, you're doing Conan. Yeah, yeah, like I've watched more movie trailers on Colin and Greg than I have like my entire life. You know, like when I'm not Isn't in a movie that theater. fascinating, though, that like you will you're, you're more inclined to watch a movie trailer, a two minute trailer for an hour and a half or two hour long film. And you're like, I think I'll stay away from the 70 hour game that I'm about to indulge. In. I'm not going to watch anything about that. Like it's it's it's, it's backward, right? Like it you guys, is weird. Like we yeah. should we should be way more uh, into into, you know, consuming media pre pre game release. than We should movies. We should just stay fucking radio silent on movies. But we're so conditioned to, to like want to see that trailer. You that know? said to play devil's advocate anyway. I do think that it's overstated sometimes how much a movie is spoiled in, in trailers. The one the one example I can give, even though I didn't see the movie, I read the book was The Martian. Everyone was freaking out about the mm, Martian spoiling mm. the movie. And I'm like, what are you like, what are you talking about? The 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 mission goes south like literally in the first two pages of the book. They're not spoiling mm. anything. That's the fucking movie. Yeah. How is the man being stranded on Mars? It's not about how he got stranded on Mars, it's that he is stranded on Mars. Right, That's what the fucking surviving. movie's about. Yeah. So people sometimes people lose their minds not yeah. having any further context. Because I remember a lot of people being upset about that when we were watching the trailers. And I'm like, I read this book and it's about what he does on Mars, which they don't really show. He lives. So give That's a not a surprise. He's alive right. on Mars. That's what the movie's about. You know, so I'm like, so everyone's like, oh, you know, it, this disaster happens, all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. This is literally the epilogue. Everyone was so upset in uh, Furious 7 when it showed the car going from building to building. Like, You're spoiling it. It's like, but no one knew there was a second building that they jumped to. No, see, in that way, <laughs> yeah, they actually. That was fucking awesome. They, they actually like used a meta that joke. trailer. Yeah, it was a joke. They used the trailer to actually punch that joke through. Yeah, and it was or, amazing. In, in that moment through, rather. And it actually worked well because I was like, oh, here's that stupid scene. What the fuck? There's another They're building. They're doing it again. <laughs> another building. But, but I'm sympathetic. Shut up. Turns the table over. Why is there a table in a movie theater? I'm sympathetic to the to the plight though of spoilers and stuff like that because I've talked in the past about how spoilers have actually gotten me into things. Uh, uh, it, when I got into Lost in college, it was because a friend of mine, um, Brandon, told me and my girlfriend at the time about the numbers and all this kind of stuff. It was after season two had already aired, and I was like, "That sounds awesome." And then so he told me about the island and the numbers and the Dharma Initiative and all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, "This is cool. Like, this sounds cool." So I got into that because of the spoilers. I wouldn't have known. If not for you know four eight fifteen sixteen twenty three forty two, which I'll always remember that it's why? that it's that I was <laughs> why why <laughs> that is I used to have a shirt when I first worked I didn't have the numbers on I used to love Lost and then I realized it was awful. Um, yeah, I was gonna say there's no way to spoil Lost because nothing, nothing ever, ever happens. happens in Lost because <laughs> they don't know what it is they don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, hey, there's a smoke monster. What is it? No one knows. And then the the, no the wasted knows. episodes anyway and the char- the random characters like the scientist Pablo lies. Yeah pa- yeah that one that's the classic. Um, so so there are ways that like you can string someone in by giving them some even some intense spoilers. The numbers and the hatch and all that kind of stuff are definite spoilers, especially if you've never seen the first episode or the first season of Lost. But that was the reason I gave Lost a chance. So it, it definitely um, it because like when I saw commercials for Lost in college, I was like, is this about like I literally was like, is this like some pr- pr- some pretty people on an island? Like I'm like this. What the fuck is Swiss this? Family like Robinson. I had no idea what this was. Like I don't care, you know. Um, and it was like no, it's a deep like almost sci fi show. And I'm like, oh okay, cool. Uh, same thing with Battlestar. So where people are getting me into the Cylons and all that kind of stuff. So knowing something can definitely inform you more about if you're going to like something or not. But I generally am, am sympathetic to the plight um, of spoilers and especially for like live broadcasts and stuff like that. Like I, I hate um, sports spoilers when I can't see anything like that's when you have to just stay off of social media. And um, I had dinner the other night with some friends during the uh, the Republican debate and I had to stay off of social media mm. I, and I tweeted out as a joke. I'm like, this is my, you know, Star Wars or whatever. Like, I don't want to know what happened. I don't want any tweets. I don't even want to see anything. I want to see. I want to see what my own two eyes. Like, You're sick. You're sick. I am. I am. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm sick for a lot of reasons. You're the only person that want doesn't want a presidential debate spoiled for them. <laughs> Sometimes there are great moments in presidential debates that would go. I'm, I'm still waiting for the real uh, one for this cycle, but like, you know, everyone. Well, not everyone, I guess, but you know, it's a very symbolic. 1960 Nixon JFK when Nixon's like sweating bullets and stuff like that. Like that's a really. That was the first televised debate, and that was a really emblematic uh, debate in uh, uh, terms of like how a, how a person loses, and so you want to see that kind of stuff. Mm. With your own two eyes. I want to, if there's going to be an implosion of a candidate, I want to fucking see it. I don't want to hear about it. I want to see it as if I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, that's, that's fun for me. That's more fun. <laughs> I'd rather see that than the new Star Wars movie. Um, so it's, it's, uh, so I'm sympathetic to that, but at the, at the same time, I just avoid spoilers. I just, I just, uh, when I know what, when, you know, I'm sure a new Bioshock game is going to come out. I'm not going to watch anything on it. I don't care. I will play it when it comes out. I'm sure it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. You know, um, 
you know, Final Fantasy 15 is near and, and there's a bunch of shit out there. And I'm just like, I'll just play it when it comes out. I'm sure it'll be great. You know, so Are I think you sure it'll be great. No, Final Fantasy 15. Okay, no, sure. I'm not sure it's gonna be it's great. Not at all. Gonna be good I mean, online. even Tales of Zestiria. Right, I mean, right, that's Tim. I was looking forward to that game. I played it in Japan some years ago, but um, I didn't watch anything or read anything about it at all. That was my least favorite thing to do at iGen was to preview games because I was like, I don't want to. I like, I don't want to play this vertical slice. I want to get into it when it's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think some people, much like the Black Friday debate, there has to be some responsibility taken on the side of the consumer. That they subject themselves to this shit, and it and it sends the signal that this is what they okay. want, and they do. So sure, I mean, so I just I just restrain I just re- refrain from doing any of that stuff. Yeah, you got you got to self police, right? Similar to the, exactly like the 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 Black Friday debate, right? Is like it's of course it's great. Go buy something if you want to buy something. It's the people that take it to the extreme that 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 minority of people uh, that kind of make everyone else look bad if that makes sense right and it's the same with these trailers like you don't have to watch the trailers i don't need to watch i know there's a japanese star wars trailer and a tv spot that i haven't seen i'm not going to search for them i don't need that like just don't look for them and guess what you're gonna come on tv just turn the fucking channel or pause it or fast forward it well actually it doesn't matter on tv anyway because most people aren't either a watching tv or they're definitely not watching commercials so who cares (laughs) just fast forward through it i will say that uh my favorite thing now are p- is people like just spoiling things that have just come out, like in YouTube comments or on Twitter or whatever, to be dicks. It's been, like I remember when The Last of Us came out and there was all these people spoiling The Last of Us and and people were freaking out and I'm like, yo, I beat the game. This isn't even true. Well, that was yeah, like everyone, yeah, like, yeah, everyone's, yeah. everyone's like freaking out. I'm like, this doesn't even happen. In remember the game. that was pulled from the cutscenes, right? When they put out that thing, mm-hmm. everybody jumped in the cutscenes, thought so they knew it, so they shouted out. So stupid. It's it's um, but that's been that way forever. Though remember Dumbledore dies when people would just go into they, <laughs> they, they fucking Dumbledore dies dicks. on page whatever it was and they would just jump in yeah, like, chat rooms and scream that. Well, well, there were yeah, fucking like, assholes that, that would like run down. I would be like waiting in line. They run in the line. They would run in. They would get first in line and they would read like the last like chapter be like Dumbledore dies if someone had done that to me I would have gotten that person's name and had Kevin kill them whoa <laughs> Kevin would you have killed him for me yep, yep. good Assassin. man Kevin good man yeah but I, I I just I remember um someone spoiling the killing for me like as a dickheaded move on Twitter or whatever and I was so mad they, weren't, they didn't and, spoil that for you bro they no, saved you yeah they, the well, they, they did the cause, yeah they did because I really I was like I was kind of into it but um but then I, I remember the vindictive side of me this was this was so this was Fall 2012, and I knew this guy was like a listener of Podcast Beyond back when Greg and I did it, and and I was like, I wanted to write his name down and be like, I'm gonna get the Last of Us early, and uh, I'm gonna beat it before oh anyone beats it, and then I'm gonna just email him, and just tweet at him, and just be like, you know, blah 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 happens or whatever, and just ruin it for him. But I'm like, Colin, that's the dark path. <laughs> You know that's the God dark damn. Path. That goes beyond dark, Colin. Yeah. That's that's sinister. That that's is, some sinister shit, right? No, there. what's sinister is thinking that that's a cool thing to do to anyone. You yeah. know, like like that's the sinister thing. Like who who gains pleasure in doing that kind of thing, like spoiling something for someone? I just don't get. I don't get that mentality. Like what 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 do you get out of it? What do you derive out of that? People spoiling Fallout Four for people. Someone spoiled Fallout Four for me, but I'm like, I don't really care. I mean, I, I was like, that's kind of an obvious arc. I thought that that's what was gonna happen anyway. So I'm like, that's not the reason mm-hmm. I'm playing it. Um, but uh. You know, I just I, there's some fucking demented people out there that really just gain pleasure in, in doing those kinds of things. And I will re I will reassert the cosmic truth that what goes around comes around always to your email. It or always, to your always, <laughs> always, <laughs> dude, it always happens. What like wh- however you read the tea leaves, it always happens when you treat people like shit. Something bad happens, you know, and true. it might be in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years. It can be it's something totally unrelated, but. I do think you you know it's it's about positive and negative energy and the people put negative energy out there to just ruin things for other people. I don't I don't get it. It's fucked up. You should stop doing that. Some movie trailers suck. I like them. 